How's it going everybody? What's up? What's up? What's up? It is the beast. I am getting ready to do some more jackhammering and I do have a video on here, a few different videos about different jackhammers and everything else. I purchased my jackhammer at Harbor Freight Tools because it was a better investment for myself than renting one. Now, depending on your project, you might only want to rent one for a day, maybe two days, and depending on the price and everything else, it might be more flexible for you to rent one. Now, that is, that is all up to you. I purchased mine from Harbor Freight Tools. It's been a good, good, good jackhammer. It's done what I need to have it done. It ain't a big beast. It's only like a 35 pound jackhammer from Harbor Freight Tools. And it does what it needs to do. But anyhow, what am I doing today? I am jackhammering the basement floor for my underground plumbing. Now, a few tips. First of all, let's just start with the jackhammer itself, all right? You're gonna want some, you're gonna be doing digging. You're going to be jackhammering and you're going to be getting dirty depending on when the house was built. You might be lucky, luckier than me, and have sand underneath your concrete, which is going to make it so much easier. You're going to jackhammer, you're going to lay a tarp or just throw it on the side and you're just going to be digging out some sand and putting, on, putting new pipe in and blah, blah, blah. That or you're gonna be like myself, and you're gonna have a lot of buckets as you're gonna watch as this video goes and fast forward, and you're gonna be digging out just mud and clay and all that nasty fun stuff, which I have. So, get yourself a pair of boots, just rubber boots. I prefer the ones with the steel toes. You can find these at your local uh, lumber yards your farming stores, uh, if you have a fleet farm by you, or a tractor supply, or a bum guards, um, the list goes on and on and on, where you can find rubber boots with steel toes. You don't need them insulated unless you are working in the winter, you're outside and you want the insulated ones, go ahead and get the insulated ones. But if you're going to be inside a lot, you're going to want the non-insulated. All right, they're easy. They just slip right on. I love them. So I'm just going to throw these on real quick and keep talking. Now, to uh, also, let's say you're not a plumber, all right? I'm not a plumber by trade, and you're very nervous on doing the plumbing yourself. Call up your, get a few, so many bids, you know, because a typical person wants to get so many bids for their plumbing, all right? Or any project you're doing. So that way you know that you're getting it done right and you're not having to pay overly too much and everybody is comparable around the same price. Next, um, so let's say you're not comfortable about plumbing. You find that plumber that you really like and you want, ask him or her, say, what can I do to save myself some money? Because everybody likes to save money. They will tell you that jackhammering and doing the digging and the dirt work, or at least getting the majority of that part started for them, will save you lots, lots of money. All right. So if you're having to jackhammer like I am in your basement for your underground plumbing to uh, either put new plumbing in, fix the old plumbing, or like myself, if you watch any of my videos prior, uh, I have a mess in this basement for plumbing, from going to the sewer lines to the city lines. So, um, right in this area that you can't see, I already jackhammered that, and then I found out my issues. So, I'm not going to discuss that because that is in other videos prior to this video. Uh, so... To save yourself some money, long story short, talk to the plumber, ask them, can I do the jackhammering, can I do the digging, what will it save me, and they will give you all the pointers. Now, 
for jackhammering, basic little safety tools. You'll see it in other videos of mine. I always like to make sure because this was this is a more serious video, so I want to make it a little bit more serious. Always have safety protection. And if you're jackhammering, you can have safety glasses or your regular safety glasses, but the, the concrete and the dirt and rocks and stuff will bounce up off of your face, off of your shirt, and go into your eye. I always prefer the ones that are sealed. Make sure you have some ear protection. I just have these fancy dancy ones that I can wrap around my neck, throw in, blah, 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 and they work great. Um, any kind of ear protection will work for you, as long as you have it. Uh, tools that you're going to want. Oh, before protection, it don't matter how young and how old and how strong your back is, all right? I don't have a great back because I'm not a young whippersnapper, and when I did stuff, it wasn't smart always, right? I didn't always grab the ear protection. I didn't always grab the safety glasses. I didn't always grab a pair of gloves to put on my hands. So now my hands are effed up. My back isn't the greatest. So go to anywhere and buy yourself a back brace unless you don't have one. I, If you're going to do something like this, it doesn't hurt to throw on a back brace. It doesn't make you a, if you're a guy and you're like worried about uh, people laughing at you, well, laugh at them because your back's going to be stronger than theirs is for many years. It doesn't make you a wimp, a, a, a puss, anything, right? Just put on that back brace. It helps. Uh, other safety protection, like I said, gloves, ear protection, safety glasses, work boots, preferably with still toe boots, uh, still toes. Uh, I don't prefer, I prefer short sleeves when I'm working with any kind of machinery if I can, and pants, and not baggy. But also you want room to be able to bend and move around so you don't want those skinny jeans. Skinny jeans. What a fashion statement those are for some people, right? Skinny jeans. Uh, now, on the jackhammer itself, you're going to have tool inserts. You're going to want to make sure you grease your insert, your tool bit it is. Uh, this is just bearing grease. It's for use of farming and trucking, construction. It's just grease. I actually uh, talked to one plumber, one guy that goes, well, I don't grease my jackhammer. Well, well, for one, then you better not hire that guy because he don't care about your project either if he doesn't care about his own tools. I always grease my tools. They recommend it. Uh, if you rent it, they're probably going to tell you the same thing. Most likely, they're going to say, can you make sure you grease it? And if you do grease it, clean it really good. Clean it really good first because you're going to have grease on it. And it's pretty simple. I'm going to come closer so you can see what I'm talking about. zoom in real quick so it's just your I just got a flat chisel and there it is that's the insert this is my grease that I've been using it works pretty easy it's it don't matter it's red all I do is I just dip my rag a little bit in there I gotta set my grease down and you stick it in your mouth because you want to taste that grease yum right pretty simple I just put it on there get it started and then just uh rub it on rub it on everybody got to practice rubbing some grease on the shaft here right it's uh pretty simple just <laughs> just uh rub your grease on your shaft and uh it'll be happy because it gets warm it gets warm and then it keeps all the gears good it's simple don't need to be crazy about it and uh then uh, after that, before you uh, stick your tool insert in there, just check your hole. I just like to clean it myself a little bit. You're not going to really see from there, but I just like to take out a little bit of that dirt or grease or if old dust or rocks were in there. And then I lock it in place. Bye-bye. You can reuse these. You can throw them away. I usually reuse them. 
but I got a bunch of them, so I'm just going to toss them. Uh, let's see, next. So we can move on and get to working. I just close that up. A couple extra little tools. A nice flat bar. Alright, crowbar, flat bar, whatever. It really helps. Especially after you jackhammer. As you're jackhammering, you'll see me prying on the rocking and the concrete and pulling it out of my way. Another couple tools that you're going to want. I prefer having these two short handle shovels, all right? One is a Stanley Fat Max uh, spaded shovel. Another one is a flat Stanley Max uh, shovel, all right? It's no big, it's just preference. So you got a flat and you got a spade, short handle, preferably. And if you have a wet area like I do, and I don't know where she is. I don't know where she is. One second. One second, ladies and gents. A six inch, that's right, drywall putty knife. Why? Because when you have your buckets and you're scooping out that mud, for example, Let's say I have a lot of mud on this, right? Well, right now I don't really have, but you can see a little bit, right? I'll take this right by my bucket and I'll scrape that like that. And if you have some nice carpenter jeans, you just stick that putty knife right there and just keep going. And hopefully you have another worker that is going to take out your mud for you and bring it outside. And you might want to set some aside for later use. Myself, I have a bunch of gravel and rock because I've been doing a lot of landscaping. And I'm going to be filling my trenches that I dig with my gravel, my river rock, and then some sand. So if I ever have to do this or someone else has to do it, they don't have to deal with mud again. Uh, that is basic tools that you're going to need basic protection that you're going to want and like I said talk to a few plumbers find out what's going on with your house uh, if you're not sure that's the first step uh, you can rent if you're like in my situation and you're guessing you could rent a camera or uh, you can do what I did and talk to a couple plumbers and well I have videos on that I got I got SOL with some of my uh, companies I was trying to hire but anyhow so I took I this underground sewer line right here for me is four inch I took a uh, one and a half two inch pipe and then in this area but you can't see I already pre dug I'll uh, show you in real quick I already pre-dug this area in a way, but I'll show you that down the road after the fact. But anyhow, um, it's pretty simple. I uh, took, took a pipe, stuck it into this area because why? My plumbing that's in here, they didn't do it right or after many years it started sloping the opposite way. And all my sewer lines are fate coming your way where I need my sewer to go that way with the slope and the slope is going towards the camera instead of towards the work area where I need it to go and that's we'll talk about that as we're doing the actual plumbing so I took one of my pipes I stuck it in there I know that where uh, my orange line is right here somewhere right here there's a corner going off to another direction so I know I need to jackhammer this area right here so wide and clean it out and then find out what's going on after that. And when we get to that, I will uh, be back on the camera. Now I'm going to plug in my jackhammer. Uh, this one requires 15 to 20 amp plug-in. So make sure you research that, what your uh, jackhammer needs to be plugged in on. I uh, will be using 
an extension cord and you want to make sure that your extension cord that you're using is a heavy duty con construction con extension cord not a little light orange one that uh you know what i'm talking about everybody sees these little ones that's used to right now to be uh for lighting for me but a nice heavy duty one this jackhammer it usually takes about five minutes to warm up and get going and uh meaning wise is while I'm using it, you're going to see me looking like I'm struggling maybe at the beginning. But no, it's just the jackhammer itself. It just takes a little bit of time to warm up. If I was doing a big area, it would be warmed up and I'd be kicking butt. But I'm one like you might be. I like to listen to my radio while I'm working. So I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to get to work. And then you can watch it fast forward. All right. Those are your tips. Hope that helps. One last tip um, before I uh, put this on mute and listen to my radio. Um, I prefer a can of spray paint. All right. Orange, bright, something bright that you use that has the top sprayer. You can put a marker down. Like you might see if I zoom in, let me zoom in here for you. Ah, it's a little difficult right now with my camera crew. But anyhow, yeah, you can't really see it, but I scribed a little marker just so I knew where I needed to jackhammer. And then I spray my uh, spray here, my orange can. I just give it a line where I wanna go on both sides and jackhammer. And the purpose for this is, is the dust gets going, you get sweat in your eyes or anything. I can still see that orange line. It's not going to hurt the concrete because I'm going to jackhammer it out of there. So, a little can of spray, depending on what you're doing. You might even have it laying around your house or in your garage or somewhere. So, it's very helpful. Just a tip. Uh, you can do it with a marker. You can do it with a pencil. But I'm going to tell you, friends, you ain't going to see it this helps and you're gonna see me uh, as I'm jackhammering I'm gonna give myself a gradual line some people will take the time to go buy a saw a concrete saw that's gonna kick a lot up a lot of dust depending on your uh, lifestyle of this project and everything else the saws do come in handy but I prefer just doing it with the jackhammer myself all right I gotta go to my music and get going <laughs>
What's up? All right, I'm not gonna take off my safety glasses because I like them. Anyhow, I just want to show you something in this dusty area. All right, I take that jackhammer. It. Right? Let me zoom out here real quick. I take that jackhammer and I jackhammer a straight edge. Yes, very straight. Down so far, just a little bit of a groove, just to give myself a line that I'm going to work with, okay? All the way around. This is my first little section that I know I have to take out. And I'm not sure if it's going to go this way or go straight out. I'm hoping it goes straight out. Alright? So, uh, just a simple little thing. Just take your jackhammer and give yourself a line to start with. And then after that, it's pretty simple after that. You just start breaking up. See, I'm already, now that you can, now I'm off the tripod over there, you can see I already had to dig out. That was like a disaster by itself. Um, typically, you wouldn't have to go this wide like I had to over here, okay? But the plumbing was going yig, going everywhere, and when I was breaking up the concrete, that's a whole story in itself. But, under this board here, I have this little walkway here, so that way I can walk over my uh, trenched area. I just laid some boards down, some rips of uh, OSB. So, I'm going to trench, continue to jackhammer that way. And then when I get done with this part of the jackhammer, I'm going to throw the concrete chunks off to the side. I'm going to get my shovel and my bucket, and then I'm going to start digging out this little trench area. And when I do, I will uh, take this board off so you can see what's going on underneath there. So that way I can find out which way this elbow of uh, hookup to the city is going. If it's going towards the side or if it's going out front. Woo! Now I gotta get back to my music. That's right. My music. And yes. It is a very loud job and it can get very dusty. So, if you know that you're going to be working in an area that you need to do some prepping on, like putting up some poly and all that stuff, if you have a furnace and all that in your house, make sure you do a great, great prep job. More prep, less clean up down the road. And when you're wearing bandanas like I do and you get a little sweaty, these glasses get to fogging up. Yeehaw! Another uh, good tip. Let the jackhammer do the work. Do not pry, do not push. Uh, hold it up a little bit, but also where it's just doing its bouncing, okay? And uh, so that way you don't get your chuck stuck. It's not a pry bar. Remember that. on the camera but once I get my line and I get a good start I just start going into the center of this trench and it usually breaks up really easy Concrete is, you're gonna get lucky or not. This is like 
really, really uh, little, too thin. It should have been about three or four inch pour. And somebody, I can tell, did this too fast and tried to go on the cheap end. So no wonder my plumbing isn't more on the cheap end. It's like an ice cube tray. Take it out and uh, just set it aside. It makes it easier to uh, keep going forward, depending on how far your trench is. Like I said, that's why this pry bar is handy. The flat bar on the shelf will be handy. Then you can work the edges. All right. It's back to the radio. Well, that wasn't so bad now, was it? Now, that wasn't so bad now, was it? Whew! That wasn't so bad. Anyhow, pretty simple. Um, now, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about down here. You probably aren't going to be able to see it because it's dark. But I have my uh, plumbing down there. So when I take off my uh, boards here, we're going to keep going. But I'm going to be making this trench not as wide as this. But going back that way to uh, find this how uh, this plumbing is connected to this uh, to the city sewer um, the reason being is because when I was taking out this old plumbing what the hell was that noise when I was taking out this old plumbing um, uh, I still hear it I don't know what the heck that is. Something crazy outside, hopefully. Anyhow, hopefully I didn't stir up something downstairs in this uh, underground. Ooh. I hear something really funky in my basement. Wow, the jackhammer's making some noise. You hear that? Anyhow, enough of that nuts stuff. I gotta clean up this mess. And uh, 
make part two of digging and everything else because I don't like anybody having to watch like three hour videos unless you like to watch a three hour video so I'm going to uh, make this part uh, let's say part A of trenching or uh, jackhammering and then I will start to uh, flip for uh, part B for uh, digging and then we're going to keep going alright oh yes until next time until next time Woo! Don't eat your ass on this project.